Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. So today I am discussing an interesting discourse and this is discourse, the number is MN63. Title of the discourse is the shorter discourse with Malunkhya. And this is a really interesting discourse. So you have to, uh, you have to watch the complete video to find out, right? So here this, uh, in this uh, case, what happened was that uh, Venerable Malunkhya was, uh, was thought, right, that uh, there are several con conventions, convictions that Buddha has left undeclared. A lot of things that Buddha has not, you know, declared that he has set them aside and refused to comment on them, right. And uh, for example, is cosmos eternal or is cosmos not eternal or it is, is it finite or infinite? The soul and body are the same thing or they are different things. After death, a realized one exists or no longer exists, or both exist and no longer exists. Buddha does not give me a straight answer on these points, right? So he was like, he was agitated that Buddha did, does not give me straight answer on these metaphysical questions, right? And you no, know, even one question is that whether God exists or not exists, right? Um, so Buddha was silent on these these points when someone asked them these questions. Right? So, so he said, I don't endorse that. I, I do not accept it. I will go to him and I will ask about this. If he gives me a strained answer on these points, I will lead a spiritual life under him. If he does not give me a straight answer on any of these points, I shall resign the training and return to a lesser life. So he's like making his spiritual life conditional upon Buddha declaring uh, his clear view on these metaphysical questions. So let us see what, hap what happens. So, late afternoon, Marlunkya went to the retreat and met to the Buddha. And he said the same thing, that if you either give me a straightforward, I, either you tell me a yes, for example, if I ask you whether cosmos is eternal, I, either ask, answer me yes or no, or if you are not clear, then tell that I am not clear. Right? So now, now see what Buddha responds. So, now Buddha says, Marlunkya comes it. When I, did I ever, now Buddha says, Malunkya, did I ever say to you that come Malunkya, lead the spiritual life under, under me and I will declare these things to you? Did I ever promise you this? He said, no sir. Or did, I, did you ever say to me, sir, I will lead the spiritual life under the Buddha and the Buddha will declare these things to me? He said, no sir. Then Buddha said, in that case, silly man, are you really in a position to be abandoning anything? That means when there is no such a promise that is done, who are you to abandon anything? Right? Are you there? Are you really in a position to be abandoning anything? So now Buddha is giving an analogy of a man struck by an arrow. Some of you may be aware of this analogy. Somewhere you might have read it somewhere. So this is coming from this sutra, MN63. Right? Middle discourse is 63. Now, I am reading this. The, the link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read the entire dis discourse at your end. So, so, Buddha says, suppose a man was struck by an arrow, thickly smeared with poison. Right? right? And he got struck. His friends and colleagues, relatives would get a field surgeon to treat him. But the man would say, I won't pull this arrow as long as I don't know whether the man who wounded me was an aristocrat, brahmin, peasant or a menial. Or he would say, I won't pull this, this arrow as long as I don't know the following things about the man. His name and clan, whether he is tall, short, medium, whether his skin is black, brown, tawny, what will his town, city he is from. I won't pull out this arrow as long as I don't know whether the bow that wounded me is made of wood or cane. Or whether the bowstring is made up of swallow what fiber or this fiber or that fiber. Whether the shaft is made from a bush or a plantation tree. That man would not have learned these things and meanwhile they would die, right? So if you are struck by an arrow, you will not question these things, whether this arrow was made by this, 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 this. In the same way, suppose someone was to say this to Buddha, I will not lead spiritual life under the Buddha until Buddha declares to me, so and so cosmos is eternal or that after death, a realized one neither exists, this, this, this. So by his death, the same thing will, will remain undeclared 
and meanwhile the person would die. Then Buddha says, it is not true that if there was the view cosmos is eternal, there would be living of spiritual life. It's not true that if there was a view cosmos is not eternal, there would be a living of spiritual life. When there is a view that the cosmos is eternal or cosmos is not eternal, there is rebirth, there is old age, there is death, there is sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress. And it is the defeat of these things in this very life that I advocate. So Buddha is saying is, whether you hold this view, whether God exists or God doesn't exist or cosmos exists or cosmos is infinite or cosmos is infinite, irrespective of all of that, what exists is sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness, distress. And it is the defeat of these things that the very life that I advocate. So Buddha's teaching is about suffering. So Buddha first says, you debate endlessly upon all these things, irregardless of all these things, your suffering will be there. That is the truth. Right? And what I teach is how to get rid of suffering. That is my focus. So Buddha says, so Mal Malunkya, you should remember what I have not declared as undeclared and whatever declared as declared. And why haven't I declared these things? Because they aren't beneficial or relevant to the fundamentals of the spiritual life. They don't lead to disillusionment, dispassion, cessation, peace, insight, awakening and extinguishment. That's why I haven't declared. So, what basically I understand, Buddha only spoke of things which lead a person from suffering to being free of suffering. Buddha would have known a lot about lot of things and this is appearing in some other suttas as well. I don't recollect the exact numbers right now. Some of the somewhere some in some forum someone said this. Buddha knew a lot about lot of things about these all concepts, but Buddha did not share it with the disciples because it would distract them. Right? He was so very clear on his aim as a teacher, showing from this path, this is suffering and this is nibbana, freedom from suffering. And what is the path? The Noble Eightfold Path. So Buddha was like, like a, they, they, you know, he was like, he wanted us to be focused like a horse who has, you know, these blinders, you know, focused. Otherwise, we will keep on distracting and keep on debating. And friends, one more thing I want to just, you know, it's just out of my reflection. You know, we are not, not at that level to, you know, even if we debate endlessly, you know, all these philosophers or also, you know, they keep debating upon all these things. There is a permanent self, there is no permanent self. It doesn't lead anywhere, anyone anywhere. They just take out something from one book and then they say something else and then they take something else from some book and then doesn't lead anyone. What our thing is practicing the way, getting ourselves free. And it all depends upon whether you have seen suffering in your life that much that you are focused enough to follow the path. Whether you have faith in your, in the realized one, that this realized one is giving me a path and I will just walk on it. If you don't have that faith in the realized one, then what you will do is that you will keep walking here and there, you know, do all the spiritual shopping, do this meditation, that meditation, keep on asking these metaphysical questions, oneness, duality. I come across a lot of people who keep on ending, you know, in these debates. And what happens is, and I see their level. So I'm not claiming that I am at a very high level, but I see their level. You know, they do not have a basic understanding and they keep on debating at those things. So, I mean, you know, for all of us, this is a very, very important sutta to remember. Do not waste your precious time and energy in these unnecessary metaphysical inquiries and questions. You'll waste your life. Rather than just follow the path, take a teacher, follow one teacher, may it be Buddha, may it be Krishna, may it be Jesus, Make, follow one teacher and follow that teacher's path, what the path the teacher has given. We are so blessed that we have a teacher like Buddha who has given us such a clear path. Just follow it. Don't unnecessarily distract yourself. Right? So this is what my learning is. I hope uh, this was a useful discourse for you too. The, the, the whole analogy of a man who is uh, shot by an arrow and he you know, keeps on questioning who has hit me and you know what the arrow is made of. So nobody, nobody would, he, his first priority would be take out that arrow. So similarly, our first priority is take out the suffering. Right? 
Okay, so this was it. Do share your learnings, your thoughts in the comment section. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya Namo Buddhaya.